Well, may the words of my mouth and may the thoughts of our hearts, O oh God, be acceptable in your sight because you and you alone are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, how many of you saw this on the TV? And what emotion did it create within you? Sadness? Stress? I don't know about you, but I know about me that when I saw this on TV, I, I got the screenshot from CNN, I was taken back to 911. Those same emotions, like what's happening here? Like that, that song that we sing during Lent, were you there? Dr. Jen sang it on Good Friday evening. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Sometimes it causes me to tremble. I had that trembling feeling. That's why the news anchor who said, you don't have to be French. You don't have to be Roman Catholic. You don't have to be European. You don't have to be an artist. You don't have to be an architect. You don't have to be a person of faith in order to be moved by this Scene. And why is it that those things move us? Well, there's a lot of reasons. But one important reason, in my opinion, is that it is a powerful reminder that things made with human hands do not last forever. Isn't it true? Something that is 850 plus years of age is seemingly indestructible, right? And yet, as one of the other anchors said, something that takes 250 plus years to build can be destroyed in a matter of seconds or minutes or at most hours. So why is it that these kinds of things shake us in the depth of our soul? I think it's because we are reminded matter matters. Now can I say that again? Matter matters. Now I promise you I'm not going to go off on a tangent even though I'm tempted to because Christianity in one of its most unique contributions says matter matters many religions say all that matters is the spirit but matter matters and we're aware that matter matters so much that it is fragile and it is capable of being destroyed it is capable of experiencing disease or devastation or death all of these things take years to build and can burn down like that. And that's not only true of buildings, it's true of lives, it's true of marriages. Anything that matters can be gone like that. Like the family business. I read recently of this business in Wichita, 75 years in one particular family. Now it's gone. You could fill in the blank with your own stories. Matter matters. Because building makes statements. Lives make differences. Relationships make life rich. Matter matters. The story that Heidi read for us from the Gospel of Luke demonstrates the power of emotion around devastating events. These women and the men had given up everything to follow Jesus. During Lent, Jim and I were talking about this, that literally they would follow the rabbi as their teacher. You were never to walk equal to. You were never to walk in front of. You were only to walk behind. And you walked closely behind. And they would say, may the dust of your rabbi come upon you, meaning you're so close 
that you're not willing to have anybody come between you and your rabbi. And these women and men had given up everything in order to follow Jesus, and now he's dead. Can you imagine their emotion? I'm sure they were thinking, how stupid were we? Why did we fall for this? I thought we were smarter than that. And Mary Magdalene and the women, doing what Jewish tradition said they should do, they were honoring and dignifying the body by making sure that it was properly cared for, that spices were placed upon the body in order for it to be buried properly. So they go to make sure that the body is intact. And what happens? The stone is removed. The angels appear. They don't quite understand what's happening other than the fact that the body is gone. And the message from the angels is that Jesus is alive. So they run back to the men. And what do the men do with it? They don't believe them. They're women. In first century Christianity, unfortunately, the women were valued by Jesus and devalued by the men. So there's this double whammy. The rabbi that they're following is dead, and the men think that they are mentally deranged. And that's precisely how Easter begins. Easter does not begin with everybody gets it. Everybody's on board with the fact that Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. No, it begins with raw emotion. Now, in case you're not following where I'm going here, we tend to think of Easter as a message for the end of life only. But Easter is that, but not only that. Because death can come long before the end of life. That's why Martin Luther King Jr., my favorite quote of his, he said, I, I don't fear that people will die. Everybody's going to die. What I fear is that people will die without ever having really lived. Do you know anybody who is walking this earth physically alive but dead in spirit that's where the women were that's where the men were as they were trying to figure out what was going on in the tomb how, how many of you would say that you're physically alive but dead in spirit see on Easter we celebrate the resurrection of the body but that's not all we celebrate. We celebrate the resurrection of the Spirit as well. As you hear Jim and I say often, the goal of the Christian life is not just to get people into heaven when they die, it's to get heaven into people while they live. That's a resurrection of the Spirit. And it can happen now, today. So it's not just resurrection after death that we're talking about on Easter. It's also resurrection during life. That's why one of my favorite passages is Philippians 3.10. Would you say it with me, please? All I want is to know Christ and to experience the power of His resurrection. What does that mean? It's not just resurrection after death. It's resurrection during life. How many do you know are in need of resurrection during life? Recently, we had the retreats, the Extraordinary Journey retreats. And by the way, if you haven't seen the Stations of the Cross outside of the sanctuary, I hope that you will take a look at them. They're beautiful. As we start with the first part of Christ's life where he's, he's betrayed, and it takes you through all the way to the resurrection. But one of the things that happened at the retreats is that Jim, in his talk, did an incredible job about speaking about grace. We tend to think of grace 
as a noun, but grace is a verb. Grace is God's activity now. Grace is God doing for us now what we cannot do for ourselves now. Grace is God creating beauty out of ashes. Grace is God loving us in this moment. Grace is God healing us from the wounds that no one else can can restore or heal. Grace is God renewing, God reviving, God rebirthing, God renewing us. God is resurrecting us from death to life. That's an activity of God's grace. That's precisely what Paul means when he writes, all I want is to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. And is he speaking about death? He's speaking about life before death. Some of you know I like to write my sermons at St. Arbuck's Chapel. So the other day I was in, I, I switch around. Sometimes I see Olivia who sings in the choir at the 21st Wichita State Starbucks. It's become so busy, it's kind of noisy in there, so I don't go there as often. But the other day I was at a different Starbucks or St. Arbuck's Chapel and this man who's a regular said, ah, I see what you're up to today. I said, yes, sir, I'm getting ready for Sunday. He said, well, how's it going? Are you ready for the big day? And that always makes a preacher nervous. Are you ready? Because we're never ready. And when somebody points it out, it just raises the anxiety. So I said, well, I'm working really hard on this sermon. And he said, well, I've got a word for you. Now, he never talks like that, so it kind of threw me for a loop. I said, well, what do you have to say? He said, well, here's my word for you. Just get out of the way and let Jesus do his work. Now, that's a good word. That's a good word for a sermon, sermonizing, and it's a good word for life. Just get out of the way and let Jesus do his work. That's why Anne Lamott, I love her writings, and this is my favorite quote of hers. God can't clean the house of you when you're still in it. Get out of the way. Let Jesus do his work. That's what I think Paul is saying when he says, I just want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection in this moment, in this day. Now, how many of you watched Tiger win last week? How many of you knew that Tiger was going to win last week? How come there's less hands that went up here? Now you talk about a comeback, right? Isn't it amazing? When our sons, Drew and Luke and I, with my brother went to the Masters a few years ago, that place is amazing. I mean to tell you, TV does not do it justice. We'd get there early in the morning and they were vacuuming the roofs. You couldn't have a leaf on a roof. They're up there, all these men up there with their equipment making sure that everything is just perfect. Tiger was there that year. He didn't win, but he was there. And this year, though, what was so special about his win? There's a lot of things. He's been through a lot. But I want to present to you today that if you and I will do what Tiger did and get out of the way and let Jesus do his work, nothing is impossible. Some of you may know this. I didn't know this until this week. I have a very good friend who's African American. I was speaking to him on Monday and we were talking about Tiger winning and he said, well, do you know that he has relatives in Wichita? I said, no, I had no idea. Are you aware that they're very close? Oh, no, I didn't know that. He said, well, do you want to know why this happened this year? He's been working hard, obviously. But the most significant thing is that Tiger has made a decision to get out of the way and let Jesus do his work. 
See, God in Christ will use the creative power of the resurrection to bring new life where there's death and beauty out of ashes. And our job is to get out of the way and let Jesus do his work in us and through others to us. And that's why, you know I'm an opinionated sort, I believe that one of the reasons why Tiger won is because the crowd was for him. Now those of you who have been at the Masters, when the crowd roars, you hear it. Even if you're on a hole, a hole that's a long way away, you hear it. Did you hear the roar of the crowd? They were for him. You see, I don't think Tiger could have done this without the people who supported him through the ups and the downs. The crowd helped Tiger win. And here's the bottom line. Pastor Benton said this to the staff this morning as we gathered early. Comebacks. Comebacks require Christ. And comebacks require cheerleaders or companions or colleagues who are for us. Nobody can make a comeback on their own. And as Pastor Ben said, anybody can make a comeback from anything, anytime, because of the power of the resurrection that's been unleashed in this world. Now hear this, nobody can make a comeback on their own, including Jesus. The story doesn't say that Jesus all of a sudden said, you know, I'm getting tired of lying on this cold slab. I'm just going to get up and walk right out of here. Does it say that? The Scripture says that the Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the, from the dead is the same Spirit that raises you and me from death to life, from darkness to light, from despair to hope in this life and in the life to come. That's what we're celebrating today. Happy Easter. Amen?